Hey everybody, hope all of you are doing well, hope all of you are doing safe and hope all of you are being productive. Welcome to the next episode, episode number two of Karanology. So as usual in this episode two, from all the questions which have been asked over the past few weeks on the comment section, I've picked four questions for me to answer to all of you. So get your papers and pens ready because I'm going to share a lot of deep insights because the questions which have come to me right now are pretty interesting. So let's get started. As usual, because we're in lockdown, I have the questions written down in a paper because I don't have anybody to ask the questions for me. So here goes. The first question is asked by Mohan. In manufacturing businesses, if you're already doing well and your operations are optimized, what is the next level of scale? So if you're in a manufacturing business and you feel you're optimized, let me first get some fundamental assumptions out of the way. You have a certain number of customers and that certain number of customers is giving you a certain number of business and using that business, you're completely optimized. Before I tell you how to scale, I just want to make sure that you don't do a critical mistake. And I've seen this with a lot of manufacturing companies. You know, they have about four or five, maybe seven to eight customers. And these few customers are giving them most of their business. And that is the reason why they're completely optimized. But I don't think it's a healthy situation to be in if you're going to uh, depend on just a few customers for your entire business, especially if you're in manufacturing, because if something in the market goes array and things don't go as per expectation and you lose even one or two of those customers, it's going to have a huge impact on your entire business. So my recommendation is don't depend on a few customers in case you're in that situation. So let's just say you are not in that situation and let's just say you uh, have in enough customers of inflow which is coming in and in spite of that you're completely optimized that's a really good situation to be in because now it's time to grow the question to ask is how do you scale the solution is actually quite straightforward you need to scale by increasing your capacity because only when you increase your capacity can you actually go ahead and increase your business now, increasing capacity depends upon the kind of domain you are in, the kind of manufacturing business you are in. You can either outsource, you can either uh, trade and procure, or you can increase your entire capacity of manufacturing in the first place to manufacture and supply more. But the second equation is how do you scale up your business by acquiring more customers? Okay, obviously your marketing strategies needs to change, but you've got to focus on building a brand and actually becoming a lot more visible for apart from your existing customers. Another great strategy or approach which you need to take is to go through geographical expansion of scaling up your business, which is to find customers in other parts of the country compared to where you are already existing. And a great way of doing that is through exploring a channel building method. What do, I, what do I mean by channel building method? You can start recruiting dealers. Once the dealers are established in different zonal areas in the entire geography, you can start hiring, you can start converting those dealers into distributors. So they find in turn multiple dealers because these are extended sales channels for you to get customers for you and sell your products for you. You can also explore joint ventures with other people who you can collaborate with and set up units for you to start distributing products and start manufacturing products. Another great way of looking for different kind of customers is also to get into white labeling. It's a new thing coming up a lot for a lot of manufacturing companies where apart from the promoting their own branded products, they're also getting into supplying products for different brands and another great way of scaling up. All in all, your approach needs to be of expanding your sales channel, creating a distribution system so that you can start tackling more customers across geographical areas. And that's my suggestion for how you need to scale up your manufacturing business. So Mohan, I hope that was valuable for you. The next question is asked by Mahesh. Let me read out the question. If I want to start a new business and I'm weak in operations, what are my options? Should I get a co-founder? So Mahesh, here's what I would recommend. It is extremely important for you to first consider what parts of the business are you really weak in according to you in operations. When it comes to operations, there are multiple roles and responsibilities. One angle of role and responsibility is to do with the product and service in itself. Are you weak in a product and service in itself? Because then I really think you should go back to questioning whether you're in the right business or not. And I'm not saying it's the wrong business, but having decent knowledge is very, very important for you to make critical business decisions in that particular domain. But I know a lot of people who may be good in the technical aspects of the product and the service, but may not be that good in the operational apps aspect of the product and service, which means that they may not be good in getting the service executed. They may not be good in operations management. They may not be good in project management, or they may not be good in customer management. 
So in that case, what a, before you make a decision about hiring or rather getting on board a co-founder, see if there are certain activities which you are weak in in the operations function, which you can outsource. So if it can get outsourced, nothing better than that. The second option according to me is to hire. If you feel that there is certain senior staff you can hire for those execution roles which are which you're weak in, which are non-technical or non-domain oriented, then you can hire. But it's important for you to have enough knowledge so that you can manage these hired or outsourced people. But let's just say you're in a situation where you believe your technical or your domain expertise is weak in operations. Then I think it's a useful direction for you to get a co-founder on board with the only purpose so that they can take as much accountability as you and they can be as responsible as you to manage the show. Because you can manage these other people if you don't have at least the basic knowledge for you to guide them, advise them and manage them to produce the result. So Mahesh, I hope that was useful for you. Depending upon what situation you are in, you can make a decision. Now, let's move to the third question. The third question is asked by Rohan and here's what he asks. Do you believe entrepreneurs should have relevant experience in a field before becoming entrepreneurs for them to become successful? So here's my personal opinion and my take on that. I think there's a very big difference between experience and expertise. Experience is about how many years or what duration you have spent in a certain field and experience doesn't equal to your capable. That's my personal opinion. I know so many people who have 20 years, 30 years of experience in their respective domains and are not successful in their, in their, in their respective domains. On the other hand, what is expertise? Expertise is, is, is dictated or is, is created by capability because when you're an expert in something, you're able to produce a result and it's a function of the knowledge and skill you have in that domain. So according to me, for you to start off a business and for you to become an entrepreneur, it's important to have expertise in that field and not necessary experience. I'm, for me, my personal example itself is, a, is, is I mean, let, let's talk about me. When I started off my training and coaching business, I was 20 years old. Did I know what I was talking about to a certain extent? Yes, but obviously I made a lot of mistakes over the journey. I clearly did not have enough experience, but I did have knowledge. I did have skill and I grew that knowledge and skill and developed my capability over the last 14 years. And today I am where I am today. Look at any other famous personality. Let's talk about Bill Gates. Let's talk about uh, uh, Steve Jobs. All of these people may not have that much experience in the domain when they started off, but definitely had capability and converted their capability into expertise. So in conclusion, I believe expertise is more important than experience for you to really become an entrepreneur. But on the other hand, be very clear about what I'm saying. You, in the name of expertise, you can't just get away by doing whatever you want. You truly need to have a decent hold about your knowledge in that domain. So in simple words, no garbage. You can't just be a nobody. You can't just have absolutely no capability and start off a business. Then you are in deception, my friend, because you're going to be fooling not just your customers, but even yourself because nobody's going to buy. So it's important for you to be capable. So I hope that was valuable for you. I hope that was valuable for you, Rohan. And finally, my last question. This question is for Manu. Here's what he asks. As a man of systems, what would you say is the method or system to validate a business idea? Very interesting question, Manu. And to be very honest, I get I get asked these questions over and over again because a lot of people who are interested to start this business ask me this question. In fact, I just did a video on this sometime recently about how to go about starting a business if you're in a job. So it is a little similar, but let me give you the steps anyway. So before for you to validate an idea, it's very important for you to first identify if for that particular idea or that idea in itself, is it really addressing a need or solving a significant problem? Which means you got to identify, is there a customer for your particular idea? Does it solve a need which is significant enough? Does it solve a problem which is really important enough? And while it's addressing a problem or a need, is that particular customer willing to pay for that solution? That's the first step when it comes to validating an idea. Second step before you to validate the idea is for you to check if if there is value uh, sorry if there is a need or a problem which you're, which this idea is solving do you have the expertise and the capability to actually provide value to address this need or solve the problem because just because you may be passionate about an idea or you think you want to get into it if you don't have the respective capability then there's absolutely no point of you pursuing the idea so is there a customer is there a need secondly can you address that need by adding value and once you feel that there is a need and you can add value, then you got to go out there and validate this idea by going and seeking, seeking the opinion of 
prospective customers or probable people who fit into the profile of people who can become a customer or who can buy. I know this can be like done in the form of a survey. This can be done by gathering opinions. This can be done by through samples wherein you actually go there and find out are people willing to pay? Are people willing to buy? Because you may in your head think that people are willing to buy, but you got to go get proof. Are people really going to buy if this comes out? And once you get a clear indication that yes, this idea is something which can get converted into business, the next step is to actually build a business model out of that idea. And when I'm talking about business model, the simple question I want you to answer is how are you going to gain customers and acquire customers? On the other hand, how are you going to provide these goods and services or whatever business idea you have to your customer? So how is the entire business going to work? What is the blueprint? And the conditions for building a business model is that first of all, it needs to be scalable, which means that if it cannot be duplicated across multiple customers and, and it can't be grown, then there's no point of you coming up with the business model in the first place. And along with it being scalable, while it is scalable, it needs to be profitable because while it's going into volumes and dealing with multiple customers, if you aren't going to make money out of it or aren't going to be profitable, my friend, then there's no point of doing that business. So you got to build a business model which is scalable and profitable. And then you need to test. You need to test this business model by going out there and doing like a sample size or a pilot project of this business where you come up with the minimum number of customers you want to target and achieve a success ratio of achieving those customers within a certain time frame and when you achieve the result like a report card you can get the right kind of insights to make a decision whether the business idea will actually work or not and once you get that proof of concept i repeat once you get that proof of concept you can go on and start scaling up the business so these are the steps and the parameters i would recommend for you to validate your business idea i hope my insights which i shared with all of you have been useful to everybody Make sure you take action and I really want to I really want to hear from you. What have you learned from what I've shared? What are your insights? Have you had experiences in the past which are related to the kind of answers I gave? Please share your comments, share your views because I want to make sure that everybody is learning from this exercise and these insights are useful to all of you. On the other hand, make sure that you pour in the questions because I'm going to be looking forward to all your questions for the next episode, which is episode number three. And I'm going to pick top four questions for me to answer in the third episode of Karanology. In the meanwhile, stay safe, stay healthy, stay productive. This is Karan Asija signing off. See you guys soon.